Okay, so let's start. So the next topic we are going to discuss is the malignant otitis externa. Not malignancy or cancer, but called so as it is aggressive infection that can spread to the bones of the face and jaw. So basically we have two types of otitis externa. One was a normal one, okay. And the other one is called as malignant. This we know as a as acute otitis externa, which happens in the swimmers. But this one is malignant. Uh, just the name is malignant. Okay, it's not that it is malignant. Why? Because it can spread to the bones uh, of the face and jaw, and deeper into the ear. So this patient will come to you with headache. It is usually caused by pseudomonas infection, which is greenish in color. So the pus will be greenish in color. Infection of the auditory canal, which can cause gangrene and necrosis, that is black colored skin near or within the ear canal. When this necrosis extends deeper into the facial nerve, you, will, you can get facial palsy in 50% of the patient. Severe pain will be in the ear, purulent, all discharge, conductive hearing loss. Why? Because hair will be pass all around the pinna in the outer ear. So the air cannot pass through the uh, discharge. So you will have conductive hearing loss. Bone conduction will be greater than air conduction in the respective ear. <clears throat> so there will be urgent need uh, in the rectal. So as it can be fatal 50% of the death if left untreated. So the important risk factor are immunocompromised patients such as diabetes, okay, and uh, the diagnosis could be done with the help of CT scan. Okay. So what are the main points? Okay. Now let's discuss. The first one is this is not a malignancy or cancer. Not. Okay. The second one is it is just an aggressive otitis media, a type of aggressive otitis media. Now this can further go into the uh, bones like uh, base bones. Okay and it can go down into jaw bones of the ear canal. And it can also lead to um, facial palsy, like seventh cranial nerve, it can affect the seventh cranial nerve, okay? And it can cause necrosis into the seventh cranial nerve. Now there will be air, so there will be discharge and conductive hearing loss. So pain, conductive uh, discharge and uh, to the face and jaw bones as well. So there will be palsy of the seventh cranial nerve. So urgent ANT referral will be needed because this is very fatal. 50% yeah, die if not treated. So we are going to go for the CT scan. Okay, so the next one is uh, treatment. The treatment will be non-resolving otitis externa with uh, worsening pain should be referred urgently to ENT. IV antibiotics will be given that covered the pseudomonas infection that is ciprofloxacin. So pseudomonas is the culprit of the malignant otitis externa. Okay, now let's move further. Sensory neural hearing loss, dizziness, uh, plus minus tinnitus, what is it? We can suspect acoustic neuroma or linear disease. But in acoustic neuroma, there will be fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth cranial nerve palsies. If not, then it is manias, okay? DVT is the now, next one is request MRI for the internal auditory canal benign mass in the cerebellopontine angle epicostic neuroma. I told you. So, this is the brain, and here is cerebellum, uh, and here is the bones. Same as on the other side. Okay. So, here, the cerebellopontine angle, this develop, and this cancer can develop, and it will put pressure on the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th cream member. So as a result, you will have deafness for tigotinitis plus policies of 5th, 6th and 8th nerve. Now moving forward, ear ache painful ear that results with the first discharge per ear occurs. Acute otitis media with tympanic and brain perforation, which releases the pressure and thus alleviates the pain. Now give five days of oral amoxicillin if the child who is allergic to penicillin, erythromycin and clarithromycin. Now this is the middle ear. This is the external ear. This is the tympanic membrane. 
ਕੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜਾਣੋ ਸੋ ਵੈਨ देयर ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰ ਅਗੇਂਸਟ ਦੀ ਇਨ ਦ ਇਕਿਊਟ ਓਟਾਈਟਸ ਮੀਡੀਆ देयर ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰ ਔਨ ਦਿਸ ਟਿਮਪੈਨਿਕ ਮੈਂਬ੍ਰੇਨ ਸੋ ਦ ਪੇਸ਼ੈਂਟ ਵਿਲ ਸਫਰ ਫਰਮ ਪੇਨ ਵਨਸ ਦ ਟਿਮਪੈਨਿਕ ਮੈਂਬ੍ਰੇਨ ਇਜ਼ ਰਪਚਰਡ ਸੋ ਆਲ ਦ ਪਸ ਵਿਚ ਇਜ਼ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰਾਈਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਔਰ ਪੁਸ਼ਿੰਗ ਦ ਟਿਮਪੈਨਿਕ ਮੈਂਬ੍ਰੇਨ ਵਿਲ ਕਮ ਆਊਟ ਆਫ ਦ ਮਿਡਲ ਏਅਰ ਇਨਟੂ ਦ ਐਕਸਟਰਨਲ ਰੈਟਰੀ ਕੈਨਾਲ ਸੋ ਦ ਪੇਨ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਰ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਰਿਲੀਵਡ ਐਂਡ ਸੋ ਦ ਪੇਨ ਵਿਲ ਆਲਸੋ ਬੀ ਰਿਲੀਵਡ ਸੋ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਗਿਵ ਓਰਲ ਐਮੋਕਸਿਸਿਲਿਨ ਐਂਡ ਏਰੀਥਰੋਮਾਈਸਿਨ ਕਲੀਰੋਥੋਇਨ ਐਲਰਜੀ ਪੇਸ਼ੈਂਟ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦ ਓਟਾਈਟਸ ਮੀਡੀਆ ਵਿਦ ਦ ਫਿਊਜ਼ਨ ਦ ਟ੍ਰੀਟਮੈਂਟ ਹੇਅਰ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਰੀਅਸ਼ੋਰ ਦ ਪੇਸ਼ੈਂਟ ਓਕੇ ਐਂਡ ਟੈਲ ਹਿਮ ਟੂ ਕਮ ਇਨ 3 ਮੰਥਸ ਓਕੇ ਇਫ ਹੀ ਹੀ ਇਫ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਫਿਊਜ਼ ਫਿਊਜ਼ਨ ਇਨ ਦ ਮਿਡਲ ਇਟ ਡਸ ਨਾਟ ਰਿਜ਼ੋਲਵ ਦੈਨ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਫਰਦਰ after 3 months you can uh, do the grommet insertion grommet insertion is basically a window which will let the all the fusion from the middle ear into the external auditory canal next is the commonest organism in phytus media the first one is uh, h influenza strep pneumonia and strep pyogenes okay so basically what you have to remember is mostly Uh, otitis media is caused by the upper respiratory tract infection okay so this is the eustachian tube in both ears and this is the nasopharynx so from the nasopharynx the bacteria goes up into the so mostly the culprit of the otitis media are mostly the ones who, who are causing causative organism of upper respiratory tract infection so the upper respiratory tract infection is caused by either strep pneumonia pyogenes or h influenza so the same bacteria can go upward and cause the otitis media okay now the most cases are viral and self limiting the commonest viral uh, otitis media is our uh, respiratory syncytial virus and rhinovirus okay these are the viruses and the bacteria i told you it was h influenza post strep pneumonia and uh, strep pyogenes and the rsv is a viral and rhinovirus summary is perforated otitis media you will give oral amoxicillin okay why because you are dealing with acute suppurative otitis media or acute otitis media if allergic to penicillin erythromycin or clarithromycin otitis externa whenever a patient comes to swimming okay or there is damp uh, environment okay so the or external auditory canal can take the bacteria and can grow it so you will have external uh, otitis externa so what you are going to give him the first treatment is 2% acetic acid okay this is the first thing this uh, plus uh, you can give hydrocortisone the second line is gentamicin plus uh, hydrocortisone okay and topical steroids could be given so three things one is amino glycosides the second one is acetic acid 2% or plus corticosteroids if perforated tympanic membrane avoid gentamicin it is autotoxic cefaxacin though okay so whenever you get a tympanic membrane which is perforated you are not going to risk it with amino glycoside because it is autotoxic so you better give him cefaxacin which is more uh, safe canada albicans it can cause the esophageal candidiasis which presents with dysphagia uh, plus minus or, or dinophagia this is pain on swallowing and there will be pain and burning sensation or swallowing of the food so if you have uh esophagus which is having a uh, candidiasis so you might be having again dysphagia or dinophagia on swallowing okay you can give fluconazole for pmg 50 mg fluconazole uh, daily for 5 days for 7 days so painless mobile lump on the anterior midline axilla that uh, moves with tongue protrusion this is thylacoacetic system so what happens is this is a tongue okay in uh, childhood in early childhood uh, when when early childhood when the fetus is in the womb of the uterus in the womb or uterus so what is uh, what is happening there are several pharyngeal pouches okay so the the tongue is connected uh, to the fascia okay? the tongue is connected to the fascia and uh, so what happens is when you uh, when the baby or the fetus comes out of the womb and the his pharyngeal pouches are totally um, matured and uh, so this fascia so this fascia 
just uh, is gets lost okay because of the maturation so somehow in some patients uh, this uh, doesn't get lost okay it is still present so whenever he protrudes the tongues out so this is um, this is attached to the cyst this is called as thyroglossal cyst so whenever the patient try to pull out his tongue because of the fascia which attaches both the tongue the end of the tongue and thyroglossal cyst so the thyroglossal cyst will move upward okay now it is the commonest neck and genital anomaly it can be painful uh, if infected a thyroglossal cyst moves up with the tongue protrusion because it is attached to the thyroglossal tract which attaches to the larynx by the peritracheal fascia so this the name of this fascia is peritracheal fascia and it is attached to the larynx okay so thyroglossal is also attached to it now a lump that moves up with the swallowing is quieter or large water so suppose if a patient comes to you and you are suspecting him of thyroid and you cannot differentiate whether it is a thyroid or whether it is a thyroglossal cyst because they both mostly comes in the midline uh, thyroid is mostly in the midline but uh, thyroglossal can be present in the at the lateral side as well but mostly they are present in the anterior midline okay now so you are confused that whether it is a thyroid or thyroglossal cyst what you are going to do is the first step the first per, uh, step is you give him some water and uh, tell him to swallow so when he swallow so both will go up on swallowing both will go up on swallowing the second test you are going to do is you tell him uh, to stick out his tongue when he sticks out his tongue uh, if he were if you were dealing with thyroglossal cyst it will uh, alleviate elevate uh, on tongue protruding okay sticking out the tongue but uh, the thyroid will not move okay so then you can know which one of it then it is now a lump that moves on swallowing goiter a large thyroid nodule okay a fluctuant lump on the translucent on the leg cystic hygroma now the hygromas are translucent okay the hygromas are translucent or transluminate now what is benign proximal positional what i do now let me briefly tell you uh, you about this so basically uh, these are the semicircular canals okay and here is a utricle here is a utricle so in utricle so in utricle there are small stones formed okay there are small stones which are formed in the utricle okay but somehow somehow sometimes these stones can get into the semicircular canal these stones can get into the semicircular canal when they get into the semicircular and to be very exact or accurate this is the posterior semicircular canal i will show you the image later when this stone uh, gets into the posterior semicircular canal okay there are some tiny hair cells in the posterior semicircular canal there are some tiny there are some tiny hair cells here okay these hair cells can perceive the movement of the fluid so this is the fluid or stones okay when stone comes here okay normally there is endolymph flowing through the semicircular canal now what happens is the patient is still okay and it is he is still and sitting okay he is not moving not moving his head so what happens is when the um, the utricle forms some stones and the stones is dislodged and the upon dislodging the stone gets into the posterior semicircular canal here are some tiny uh, hair cells which can perceive the motion as uh, sound waves okay they perceive the mo uh, motion as sound waves these are in in ultimately connected to the uh, eighth nerve vestibular cochlear nerve okay and they can give you some sensation so these hair cells are connected to the neurons which can perceive the sound by so so suppose this is a stone and it comes here and you have got a hair cell here okay so it can disturb the whole 
movement of the fluids it can increase the pressure of the movement and while the patient is still and sitting and not moving his head he will feel that he is moving his head or his uh, he or the or the whole ground is revolving around him okay so there will be some vertigo there will be vertigo is the feeling of spinning or rotating okay he will feel that he is spinning or rotating so there will be um, sensation of vertigo or spinning rotating so because of the uh, stones now let's read it out now i will i can show you the diagram as well so here you see now this is a utricle okay this is a utricle and this one is the posterior uh, semicircular canal so here the stone is formed and it dislodges here in the posterior semicircular canal and it can lead to the uh, vibration which are not uh, which are not accurate or good enough okay false kind of information okay so the so the patient will tell you that he feels like that uh, there is a spinning or rotating uh, of his head but his head will not be moving you know so what happens is look at here these semicircular canals are connected with the neurons okay now let's read out the theory The theory is uh, sudden onset of vertigo. Sudden uh, vertigo aggravated by the change in head and position lasts for a few seconds. This is very important. Often time you can exclude other things, okay, uh, by just this point. So a few seconds means that you are dealing with proximal position vertigo. And because and sudden onset means that whenever the uh, the stone is dislodged, and for a few seconds, if you uh, if you are still okay the stone can get back to its position or by a special maneuver called as epley maneuver okay so there will be few minutes nausea it is important to remember that it lasts only for a few seconds a few minutes occurs usually during the turning over in the bed or lying down so whenever a patient tells a patient will tell you that whenever he try to lie down in bed okay or turn over in bed he start uh, starts having this sudden onset of vertigo okay so now you can say that okay so there is some stone which is dislodged into the posterior semicircular canal that's why he is having sudden and positional vertigo which is uh, last in a few seconds okay now what are you going to do is you are going to diagnose this patient this is called as helpix maneuver helpix maneuver is uh, you tell this patient that okay uh, sit down here sit down on this stretcher so this is a stretcher you will make him sit down here and you will say okay 45 degree face towards me okay 45 degree face towards me and you will then uh, make him lie down and sudden okay you just make him lie down sudden so that he will his head will come here above the uh, stretcher or above the table so his neck will extend beyond the table and it will cause the dislodging of the stone into the semicircular canal okay so basically you are recreating the dislodgement of the stone from the utricle into the posterior semicircular canal so then you will ask this patient uh, that uh, how are you feeling what are your symptoms now then he will confirm that he is having the same symptoms he used to have so okay now you have got your diagnosis which is uh, benign positional vertigo okay now what will you do is you will treat him by epley's maneuver epley's maneuver is basically uh, trying to get the stones back into from the posterior semicircular canal into the uh, utricle to is a normal place okay so it is also it also consists of some body position and rolling uh, of body head so that you can uh, get back this uh, stone into the utricle Now let's move further. Is benign paroxysmal vertigo is a peripheral vestibular disorder involving the semicircular canal usually, but not exclusively the posterior semicircular canal. Okay. Now this is very important. This is a peripheral vestibular disorder. Okay. 
Now, this includes the semicircular canals, I told you, but not exclusively to the posterior surface central canal, but mostly it is posterior surface central canal. But you just remember that it happens in semicircular canal. Both conduction is normal and air conduction is reduced symmetrically by laterally. Okay, so air conduction is reduced symmetrically by laterally. This means bone, uh, bone conduction is uh, then is more than air conduction by lateral conductive hearing loss. Weber test does not neutralize as the conductive deafness is a symmetrical and bilateral. Okay, so this patient might have bilateral conductive hearing loss. Little, not so much. Okay, no, so child. Okay, so you can see it in child does not hear the teacher well in class. Uh, no, this is another topic. Okay, this is we are thinking of dealing with otitis media with diffusion blue ear. Now let me tell you what was in blue ear. You can see uh, bluish, bluish, grayish, okay, or yellow, okay, with air fluid level. Air fluid level may also be present or might not be present on tympanic membrane. These are all the clinical features I'm telling you. Air fluid level will be present, okay? If it is otitis media with effusion. If it's uh, acute separative otitis media, then what you will see? Then you will see bulging, okay? Bulging flamingos, no, not flamingo. Uh, bulging cartwheel appearance, cartwheel appearance, okay? If you are dealing with autosclerosis, then the clinical feature will be flamingo sign or Schwartz sign. Flamingo or Schwartz signs. Next, so how will you remove air, air from the foreign body? Now, first of all, you should kill the insect with lidocaine, two percent olive oil or mineral oil. So any would be the valid answer. So syringe it by water irrigation or olive oil. Okay, kill it first and then remove it. Okay, don't just uh, pluck it out, otherwise it will damage the tympanic membrane. The next thing is seeds or beans suction with a catheter or removal by hook. I already described it. So hook is basically used for solid um, objects, spherical objects, solid spherical object, okay? Solid spherical object. With hook, you can push it outside. Now, never irrigate as it would cause cause swelling because of the motor discomfort and this you know, difficulty to remove. Okay, you should never give the seed the water or oil because it can swell. It can absorb the oil or water and it can swell. Sometimes a rapid access is not urgent referral to ENT is made. So the ENT specialist removes the pee by a hook or catheter suction in a few days. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to remember a rapid access, not a rapid or urgent referral to EMT because it is not a severe condition or a emergency condition. So ENT specialist removes the P by a hook or catheter a suction in a few days. If you are not any if you are unable to remove it, okay, then you can go to the ENT. And there is no urgent referral required. But rapid access could be done. Super glue, it could be removed manually in one to two days after this formation. Okay, and uh, refer to ENT if eardrum is involved. Okay. Whenever there is something attached to the, uh, like a glue, if the child pours glue into his external ear and it is attached to the tympanic membrane and there is rupture of, uh, there is risk of rupture of the tympanic membrane, you should. Uh, tell him to go to ENT specialist. Now, air wicks build up a few drops of olive oil to soften the hard wicks. Okay, it will. The oil will soften the air wicks. Now, batteries, batteries are very dangerous, so you should refer to ENT within 24 hours. Any spherical object removed by hook. A spherical plus hard object. Okay, if it is spherical plus soft object, then you will remove it by alligator. Uh, catheter. Now, if any object of these intellectually intellectually disabled, intellectually disabled means that which is not uh, cooperative. 
the child is uncooperative, then you will remove it under general anesthesia. Okay. Now refer to NT is made in this situation when if the patient requires sedation, like I told you, in autistic child or uncooperative child, okay, or if the child is not letting you uh, remove it. And if, if there is any difficulty in removing a foreign body, okay, if there is any difficulty, then uh, or you are not able to remove it, then you should take the help of EMT specialist. And if the patient is uncooperative, okay, if the tympanic membrane is perforated, okay, or it has the risk of perforation, then you should refer. If an ADC superglue is contact with tympanic membrane, now this is the risk of tympanic perforation. Why? Because it is this is superglue, okay. It cannot be removed easily and it is in contact with tympanic membrane. If you suck it out or you try to suck it out, okay, so it can rupture the tympanic membrane. So you better leave it to the immunity specialist. Now the scenario an artistic child with a bean stuck to his ear, remove under GA. Why? Because it, he is autistic. Now acute sialadenitis often due to dehydration. Now there are two things. I already told you there is acute and no one, the other one is chronic. The chronic one is because the hair is a gland, okay, it might be any gland, might be parotid, sublingual, submandibular, mostly submandibular, okay. So hair is a stone, which is called a silolithiasis, silolithiasis. So if there is stone, okay, so the you cannot excrete the saliva, okay, or serous, serous fluid outside, okay to digest the uh, carbohydrates or something, okay? Or to make the digestion process more you know, easy. Now in acute, what happens is, this is a store, uh, gland, okay? But because of the uh, dehydration, because of the dehydration, okay? There is an infection going on here. So we will see pus, or you can see a high a flora of the, high flora of the, a microorganism present in your mouth and there will be bad breath okay so this is acute this is chronic it comes again and again okay there will be swelling uh, post uh, prandial okay so here you can see there will be the thema pain and tenderness of the gland the submandibular gland or rotted gland or sublingual gland now next is the chronic cellulitis mostly due to cellulitis Decrease library length. Okay, scenario present with pain and swelling, submandibular and present with four weeks. Okay, and the area is tender of palpation. Now, the pain is unilateral more prominent on chewing. Why it is more prominent on chewing? Why? Because the gland try to secrete out the serous secretion to help the, uh, to help you out with the digestion. But it cannot lead to secretion. So in turn, it what happens is it swells. Hearing test in children. Now this is very important. So if he is below six months, so below six months, you will do autoacoustic emission, OAE or ABR. OAE or ABR. ABR means audiological brainstem response. Okay, because he cannot tell you whether he whether he can listen or not. So you have to uh, take the help of brainstem or autoacoustic emission. Okay. So autoacoustic emission in very young child in acute audiological brainstem response. And if he is six to 15 months, okay, what you will do is you will distract him. Like you must have seen uh, most of the child, the adults try to play with is by distraction, okay? So the child of this age, you, what you can do is you can do better with a distraction, okay? destruction with the use of sound. Now two to four years. What about two to four years? Now the child is grown up, okay? The child is grown up. So you can do the speech discrimination, okay? That which speech is from girls or which speech is from boys, okay? I'm just giving you an example. So there will, you can, uh, you can examine him by the help of speech discrimination, okay? So everybody has got different type of speech. So you can do the speech discrimination or conditioned response audiometry, conditioned response audiometry. So what you can do is auto, auto acoustic emission 
okay in child because he cannot tell you when he is very young so you can take the help of the emissions and brain stems okay if he is 6 to 15 you do better destruction and uh, because at the child of this age you always do the destruction parts okay? you always try to distract him and you play with him through the destruction so it's better to destruction to do the destruction test so destruction testing and two to four is speech and discrimination and the next one is condition conditioned response of your uh, audiometry cra lastly the uh, the child who are five year old or greater you should go for pure tune audiometry <clears throat> pure tune audiometry pure pure, uh, pure tune audiometry okay okay now furunculosis and uh, boil what is the difference between so a boil is an infection of the air follicle air follicle okay a carbuncle occurs when a group of air follicles next to each other become infected so there is difference okay boil is one hair one hair uh, follicle is equal to boil okay but a carbuncle is a group of hair follicles group of hair follicles when there is a group okay like car a group of people can travel into car but a boil is one hair follicle okay now let's move for the air uh, furuncle infected air follicle okay uh, air furuncle is also called as boil okay furuncle is boil so furuncle or boil are the same thing okay so so you know that you are dealing with only one follicle one hair follicle infected hair follicle red painful tender hard nodule on the skin of the ear canal so you must remember that hair follicle are only present in uh, external ear okay so these features these all the infections which are dealing with hair follicles are only present in external ear why because uh, otitis media uh, sorry middle ear doesn't have hair follicles the ear follicles are only present in the external ear okay so there will be red painful tender hard nodule on the skin of the ear canal i mean external auditory meters so the commonest of enzyme are step aureus okay and diabetes mellitus because the it is present on the skin okay so it can cause and it can invade or it can cause the infection so who does have it this infection so diabetes mellitus or immunocompromised patient can have this disease so the treatment will be uh, mostly resolves spontaneously some may need low fluoxacetine okay in skin mostly uh, when it is not treated you give low fluoxacetine okay so just remember here step aureus immunocompromised patient and it resolves spontaneously but somehow you can give low fluoxacetine as well a very few cases grow large and they call it incision rate. if it enlarges okay and you see that now there is a lot of pus inside it okay then you can cut it okay and incise it and uh, let it dry let it drain and boil what is boil this uh, okay there will be air air conduction will be greater than bone conduction by literally normal so this means the patient is having normal okay okay this is another topic so sorry okay so they are trying to uh, examine you your hair conduction tests so we were telling the rises to the left so we are dealing with the right sensory neural hearing loss okay because the left is normal ear okay so any uh, parental concern about hearing loss at any time despite previously normal testing now this is another question okay so the answer would always be arranged or refer for hearing assessment okay so suppose uh, a parent comes to you okay and he tells you that i am suspicious about my child i think he does not hear properly okay so what you would do is your answer should be arrange or refer for hearing assessment in the following condition when any parental concern about hearing loss at any time so whenever he comes to you and he 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 has 
suspicion about his child having some hearing loss you will arrange and refer so what you will do arrange and refer a and r when a professional doctor concern when the doctor says there is something wrong with him so what you will do arrange and refer when there is temporal bone fracture you will arrange and refer arrange hearing test okay? and when there is bacterial meningitis you know that after the bacterial meningitis is uh, after you are done with bacterial meningitis treatment you should always uh, go uh, for arranging and refer him to a hearing assessment because he, he can lose his uh, hearing and now severe unconjugated indirect hyperbilirubinemia unconjugated okay so unconjugated means there is some liver pathology okay so liver can, is not able to conjugate uh, um, bilirubin and when there is delayed speech or language milestones so you will arrange and this is also very important okay if somebody cannot learn the speech well so you might think okay he might not be able to hear properly that's why he cannot learn properly okay now whenever a person comes to you with itching he tells you that i had a itch and then after that i had a pain and serous discharge in order to canal so mostly you are dealing with hepatitis externa so there will be acute tenderness uh, and there will be history of swimming traveling to high humidity we have already covered it okay so you will do with acetate acid to person gentamicin and corticosteroid this is the first line okay uh, you can add corticosteroid to it this is the second line gentamicin you can add corticosteroid to it okay super glue stuck to here contact with ear drum tampons refer to ent specialist okay now this we have already talked about and a seed has been stuck in the, what you will do is you will suction with a small catheter first you will try with hook okay and uh, no sorry uh, this is a seed not p okay so seed when it is small okay because the seed is small you just don't want to uh, pour some oil and water into it okay just suck him out with a small catheter never irrigate the seed if the child is uncooperative you should refer uncooperative mentally retarded autistic okay uh, you can remove the foreign body under g okay now rapid access ent clinic referral to be seen in a few days uh, rapid access is is equal to okay so rapid access what does it mean it means that it is semi urgent but not urgent you should remove it but you should not uh, break the doors to remove it okay you should deal it as semi urgent okay when when you are dealing with a uh, p or something 